Well, blessed Friday to you as we come with your daily encouragement. And we are finishing Revelation chapter 1, the last verses of this chapter. We talked about the blessing of God who has in his right hand the key to death and Hades. And now in 19 and 20, we reach the end of chapter 1 of the book of Revelation. Now write what you have seen, what is and what is to take place. And stop right there. Remember, this is the one who was and who is and who is to come. Do you notice something that's absent there? This is not writing about the past for John. That's in the book of the Old Testament. Up till now, it isn't the story necessarily of how Jesus walked the earth. That's the message of the gospel or of Jesus' death and resurrection. But now we have the reality that John is living in now and the reality he's living into in the future. That's very specific to this book. And it is about the debate about this book. How much of this book is about the present reality behind the veil? How much of it is yet to take place in the future? Or as we speculated about time and eternity, we might say that's both. Eternity is both the future and it is the present reality. In our church, we sing a hymn of praise. And I always found it interesting that we stress not so much Jesus coming to reign for a thousand years as some churches teach. We teach about Jesus reigning today. And it's in our hymn of praise based on the book of Revelation. For the Lord has begun his reign. It is about a present reality that is happening now. And so we have that tension. We live today and we live tomorrow. We live today and we live for tomorrow based on the encouragement of the past. But notice it's not there. Now write this, what you have seen, what is, and what is to come, and will take place. I guess he does have a past, but it is all about the present and future in this book. As for the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands, so remember, the stars are the angels, the lampstands are the churches. And some might argue that the churches may be more towards God's left hand, because churches are still a mystery. How many people of those churches are going to endure? How many lampstands will endure? There's an angel enough to encourage those lampstands, but the lampstands are going to be of different qualities, and we're going to get into that as we hear about the seven specific churches, both the good and the bad and the things in between, because this is a message from God to those seven churches. As for the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and the seven gold lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Now, I'm not trying to be presumptuous, but I would say that there is probably a lampstand for the present congregations I serve, one for East Freeborn and one for Central Freeborn. And not to be outdone, I'm sure there is one for North Freeborn that does not exist in present reality, but exists in eternal reality, or other churches that once existed, including the seven that are specifically named there. We do not know of any of them that have remained to the present reality. But maybe its fruits have, just like one starter tree has many fruits, and we do know that there are many um, the church started from all of these smaller churches that do not, at least in this side of reality, exist anymore. But I'm sure that there is an angel for them, a lampstand for them. And so one of the initial messages here is that God does not give up on the lampstand. 
God is sending the lampstand a message of encouragement, a message of warning, a message to do. And here's where we go back to that vocabulary from the first chapter, from earlier verses, patient endurance. You're going to see that throughout this book. That it's calling us to not look at the present reality as all that there is. This book recognizes that there are struggles, trials that come our way. But we need to make sure that we're looking at the eternal one that's coming after, or the one that is present with us, in, with, and under the sacraments that are given, the waters of baptism but is calling us to a deeper reality. What happens when a church falls, or in the case of, we will see in Laodicea, one of the famous churches that became lukewarm? The Spirit doesn't leave that church. The Spirit warns that church. It wants you to be on fire. And that's what we'll find with all of the messages to these specific churches. Now, I think one of the applications we'll have to wrestle with is, are these prototypes of different types of both faithfulness and, should I say, unfaithfulness? Are there churches that are more like Ephesus or more like Pergamum or Thyatira? Maybe. And that's been one of the applications, at least, of these first four um, chapters of the book of Revelation. They are descriptions of a reality that needs to be improved on. But it's not something that we ingenuity or think through. It's something that's revealed to us. And that's why we have to make that distinction in this book. These are not self-generated visions. These are visions that are trying from outside of us that are trying to be understood by us with these visual images. And so we're reminded by what Jesus at least is presented as, the one like the Son of Man, who has his two-edged sword speaking these words to these churches, and has both the stars of the messenger with the lampstand of the angels, and I'm assuming that the lampstands are in God's left hand, so that people can know that there is a message for, for them. So we assume that you have Jesus holding the lampstands in one hand and the angel stars in the other hand, and the revelation is going to come upon both of them together. And so that's kind of the guiding image of this first chapter. It's an amazing book. And yes, it is kind of a difficult book, but it is one that should bring encouragement and excitement. We are not alone in this journey. We should never be alone. And so whether we are focused on the future interpretation or the present, and I'm going to be more focused on the present interpretation, these are to encourage us to continue the race that is set before us. And my friends, that is very good news. God bless you today. We trust that these continue to be words of encouragement. Take care. God bless. We'll see you next time.